Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation which will be about quantum algorithms for the KXOR problem. Here it is. Uh, let's say we have given access to a random function which produces elements. I want to find k of these elements that XOR to zero. So we can assume, uh, for example, that the function produces as many elements as we like, and this will be the many solution case. But you can also assume that on average there is a single solution. This will be the single solution case. And uh, in that case, the domain of the function is so restricted that we have only two to the n over k elements to produce. And among, among them, we can only expect that a single k tuple is going to XOR to zero. XOR can be replaced by modular additions in all the algorithms that we're going to present uh, in, all the, in the paper that I'm presenting. Um, this is a difficult problem, and the quantum setting, it will remain so. Uh, we expect quantum, we expect squared quantum speedups at best, and usually this will be a bit less than that. There are many problems that reduce to KXO, and you can, for example, think of it, uh, th we can think of subset sum, for example, which reduces to K sum for uh, any K. And you can think of it as a prototype for all these problems, to so something that appears really often in cryptanalysis. So I will first present uh, the principle of classical algorithms and some previous results in the classical and quantum setting on how to solve this problem. And then uh, I will present the, the idea of quantum algorithms uh, using merging trees before we get to the single solution case, uh, where there are going to be some improvements uh, from this paper. So. Um, let's start with the KXOR problem in the classical setting. First of all, the query and time complexities are going to be exponential. What you choose to do is to focus on the time exponent. In both cases, so many solutions and single solution, the query complexity is going to be 2 to the n over k. You just need to have 2 to the n over k elements to have 2 to the n k tuples, and one of them goes to zero with high probability. The time complexity is much higher than that. Um, if, you, if you focus only on the time exponent, then in the many solution case, the best algorithm is from Wagner in crypto 2, and the exponent is 1 over 1 plus log 2 of k. In the single solution case, the problem becomes even, more hard, even harder, and the time is basically to the n over 2, regardless of the value of k, and depending a bit on the parity of it. Wagner's algorithm uh, is very well known and it uses a very simple uh, building block which is the following, uh, the merging building block. The merging algorithm is simply if you start from two lists which are sorted and which contains uh, let's say outputs of the function h, it is very easy to compute the list of pairs uh, which have some partial collision condition. So all the pairs x1, x2, such that their XOR has a prefix of uh, zero bit, uh, a prefix of zeros, and zero here is arbitrary. It's very easy to do so, and just think of it as an algorithm that uh, goes through both lists at the same time and simply outputs the pairs each time it sees one. The time complexity depends only on the sizes of the lists that you read and that you write. And Wagner's algorithm uses this building block in a recursive way. So we're going to, to merge lists pairwise by increasing the number of zeros that you have until we get to a full sum to zero, which is why the time complexity depends on log 2 of k. The second example is k equals 4, and we're going to keep the same uh, 4 merging tree uh, in the remaining of this presentation. Here we start with list of size 2 to the number 3, because this is the optimal thing to do. In the first step, we're going to merge with n over 3 zeros. And so the merge lists are going to be of size 2 to the number 3 on average, because we have 2 to the 2 n over 3 pairs, and we have this n over 3 bit condition. From there, we see that we have two lists of size 2 to the n over 3, and uh, there, are, there are only two n over three bits, or two thirds of the bits, uh, that are still unconstrained. The rest is, has been put to zero. 
So now between these two lists, we can expect that there is a collision. And this collision is our solution, produces a sum of four elements of the initial lists, which is a complete, uh, completely to zero. Things are a bit different in the quantum setting, but you could say also a bit analogous. The query on time complexities are still going to be exponential, and we are still going to focus on the time exponent. There are improvements in memory, there are uh, polynomial improvements in time, but uh, time exponent is still the, the, the major factor here. In, the, in both cases, uh, regardless of the number of solutions, the query complexity is 2 to the n over k plus 1. Now, in the many solution case, the, the best time complexity to solve the problem uh, has uh, an exponent that is analogous to Wagner's algorithm. The formula is a bit more complicated, but uh, it looks like Wagner's algorithm. It's, a, it's, a, it's close to 1 over 2 plus log 2 of k. Instead of, uh, instead of the 1 over 1 plus log 2 of k that you have uh, before. In this single solution case, also a bit different. Uh, instead of uh, having 2 to the n over 2, we have uh, an exponent that varies a bit with k. Um, but roughly speaking, the, the, the lowest exponent that we could obtain was 0 0.3. And, uh, and it has a closed formula depending on k, and there are other results uh, that do not fit into the formula, but I won't get into the details. Now, these are results from a paper that we did at uh, last Eurocrypt. Uh, well, the previous one, so Eurocrypt 20. And they were obtained by defining a class of quantum algorithms based on the merging uh, building block, which can be seen as analogous, but not equivalent to the, the, to the classical merging uh, strategies. So these are not the same merging trees as those that I, we use in Wagner's algorithm, and not the same as the one I just presented. But there's still a way to obtain all this uh, family of quantum algorithms and all these complexities. This paper that I'm presenting today started uh, with the goal of uh, having a, a simpler definition of these algorithms. In particular, a simpler definition that would enable to keep the binary tree representation that we have in the classical setting. Turns out that this is possible. Uh, we're going to obtain the same results uh, in the many solution case, so no improvements there. In the single solution case, uh, I could improve the results that we obtained uh, because there was uh, basically some constraints to, 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 to be modified. And uh, this will reduce the best exponent that could be obtained from 0 0.3 to 2 over 7, which is a bit smaller. It also improves actually the fork XOR algorithm uh, to the best time complexity, which is uh, known today, which is 2 to the 7n over 24. So let's uh, have a look at these quantum algorithms uh, for fork XOR and how they are structured. For now, we are going to uh, base everything on quantum search. In order to present quantum search, of course, I always need to start uh, by talking about classical exhaustive search. In classical, in classical exhaustive search, um, you, can, you can see that as having two, uh, two operations. You're able to, to sample from a search space of size n, and this space contains good elements that you're looking for. The only way to tell if an element is good is to test it with a function that you have. And so uh, you're able to find good elements in time n over t, so number of total elements uh, over number of good elements, times uh, time to sample and time to test. And more generally, you can see that as a black box that transforms your sampling procedure for the search space into a sampling procedure for the solution space. And this black box has uh, average time complexity, uh, this formula. Quantum search does exactly the same thing, except that everything becomes quantum. So you assume that you have a quantum algorithm that samples from the search space. 
and a quantum algorithm that tests if an element is good. In that case, you have a black box that creates a quantum algorithm that is going to sample from the solution space. And instead of having time n over t times sampling and testing, it has this well-known and well-appreciated uh, square root speedup. So you need only square root of n over t iterates. And this is a black box that transforms a sampling procedure for the search space into a sampling procedure for the solution space. And this is, uh, well, this is a hammer. And uh, for now, this is all we have. And when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? And this doesn't look like a nail at all. Um, merging, in the merging operation, you have two lists of large, uh, two large lists, and you create a large list, and you don't have any search anywhere. You just have to go through the list and find the matching pairs. Um, and we want to make, want to 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 write this with a search somewhere uh, if we are to make this a quantum algorithm. Uh, so the way to do it is to see this operation differently. Now we're actually going to assume that one of the lists uh, is already given, pre-computed. So L2 here is pre-computed, it's uh, stored somewhere in memory. What we're doing now is we're doing a search in L1. We are going to sample from elements from L1 until we find elements uh, that have some condition that create a pair that goes into the list L. So when we have an element in L1, um, they have, uh, okay, they have U, uh, UN bits to zero, uh, L2 already has UN bits to zero. We can find an element in L2 which matches on uh, some new bits, on L2 new bits actually, with this, depending on the size of the list. And now we can also ask for uh, some more bits to zero. And this is, this is where the search happens. Uh, before we find an element that has some more bits to zero, we need to iterate uh, to, to the Vn times. We need to, to, to sample many times from L1 before we find that. And so we have a, we have a classical search can be trivial. We can, we can find an element uh, with a single iteration. It's okay. But this is a search. And in the quantum setting, this search can be accelerated because instead of having to do the Vn iterates, you're going to have to do the Vn over 2 with the square root speed up. So here is how it looks like for the, for the folks or example. We're going to take the exact same binary tree. But this time you say some of the nodes are sampled. These are sampling algorithms. And some of the nodes are stored. These are constructed using sampling algorithms, but they are just uh, stored beforehand. So we want to sample this node because this is a solution. If we sample it, we are actually finding the solution. In order to sample from this root node, uh, we need to have a sampling algorithm from this uh, node at level one and also to have built this one. And to have a sampling algorithm for this node at level 1, simply start from a sampling algorithm for L1, and we assume that L2 is already given. So in the end, uh, the algorithm is simply constructing L2, constructing L3 merge L4, and then making a search in L1. Searching in L1 for an element that will ultimately yield an element here and a fork or here. This is a good, still the same classical algorithm. In the, quantum algor in the quantum setting, it becomes different because we have quantum search and we want to optimize things differently. So if we look like this, we have small lists uh, here on the side, a list of size of linear four, basically. And then we have a big list L1 that we explore with a quantum search. And uh, this will take time to, to the end of a four. So it's balanced in the end. So you can do this um, for any value of k, and uh, you, this is where you obtain, we obtain the results uh, of the Euro 20, and the same results can be obtained uh, in, the, in the definitions that I, that I gave in this paper. 
to define a class of binary trees which represent valid merging strategies. And they correspond not only to classical merging algorithms, but also quantum algorithms. Just compute, you just compute the time complexity differently. Just, you just put a square root uh, where they need to be. Uh, these trees are going to be much simpler than those that we defined at Eurocrypt 20 because uh, they all remain binary uh, and the previous ones weren't. But so far the results are the same. Now they're going to be different in this single solution case. What happens for a fork or in the single solution case actually? The lists that we have uh, at the beginning uh, are now as now they have a size that is limited at 2 to the n over 4. So we can't use the previous merging strategy because we needed bigger lists than that. Um, and during the search, we must analyze all the tuples of elements because there is only a, a single solution. If we don't analyze all the tuples, we're going to miss the solution. And in particular, if we try to merge, we're, we're sure to miss, surely miss the solution and uh, this will be a failure. The solution is to uh, accept that most of the time we're going to miss a solution, uh, but we merge with, let's say, an arbitrary prefix s, and we're going to repeat this for all values of s. If we do this, then we're sure to, to, to still have a look at all the possible tuples. Um, this is Schroeper and Shamir's algorithm in the classical setting. Uh, we merge with a prefix of n over 4 bits, repeat this for all values. And it's nice because it reduces the memory used. In the quantum setting, uh, things become wildly different because now we can also use quantum search over S, right? We can, we can reduce a quantum search and inside the quantum search, we do this merging operation. And uh, trees are different and there are more optimizations and the time complexity varies with the value of K, which is uh, one of the main highlights. Um, So the algorithms could become very complicated. Uh, you could interleave all these loops uh, with uh, intermediate prefixes that you guess and so on. But in the end, uh, it turns out that uh, they all keep a very simple structure, uh, which is a four list structure. Uh, instead of having only four lists, you, you can have many more lists, but actually what you do is you first take groups of them and you take all the tuples of elements in these four groups. And the groups, we have a certain uh, number of lists. So you have a group of K2 lists here with some parameter, uh, a group of lists here. So you have only have four groups and you only have a single prefix with a single loop um, that you need to make. And uh, inside this loop, so you do this merging operation. So far, these are exactly the same trees, uh, same algorithms as in the real crypt paper. Now, everything changes with this simple idea that since you have a product uh, with all the tuples from uh, K2 lists, you don't have to compute that inside the loop on S because it doesn't depend on S at all. So you can just take it outside the loop, you compute it first, uh, same for this one, and then you're going to do the loop on S and inside the loop on S, you're going to do the rest, to compute the rest of the tree. And just by doing that, you can obtain trees that are uh, a bit more unbalanced because you're going to put more weight on this, on this nose that are outside the loop. And uh, this improves over the uh, Eurocrypt paper. There is a second improvement that I would like to talk about. Um, and it actually consists, uh, it's actually a, a very simple remark. Uh, we still have this four list merging tree. And now we can remark that, okay, we, we, we're solving this problem with quantum search. Quantum search is good, but it's not the, the best tool to do that. Because ultimately the problem that we want to solve is finding a collision or a claw between these two lists, two green lists at level one. Uh, expecting, we're expecting that there is either a single one or that there isn't any collision at all. And we want to find it. Uh, so why don't we use uh, directly a quantum, a dedicated quantum algorithm to do that? And uh, well, we can. In particular, we can use Ambeni's uh, quantum walk algorithm that solve this problem. 
it's called uh, the element distinctness problem. Uh, in, and in our setting, it's just that we have this to list and we want to find uh, if there is an element that is the same in both of them. Uh, the only thing that we have to ensure is that we can, we can use this as a black box and we can sample efficiently elements from the green lists. But this is done by sampling elements at, uh, at the upper level, uh, which is easy, and simply, simply matching, as we did before, to, to, to sample elements directly at level 1. Turns out that this gives the best algorithms uh, so taking the trees that we optimized before and then putting it uh, quantum claw finding in there uh, it gives us the best algorithms for, for KXO in general single solution. And in particular the example for 4XO is very very simple. Start from these four lists or size to the number 4 and then you guess a prefix of n over 4, n over four bits. <coughs> And for each value of s, you, uh, you solve this claw finding problem at level 1. So you need to do a quantum search on the value of s. So it has to be n over 8 iterates. And the claw finding problem at level 1 uh, costs you a time 2 to the n over 4, which is the size of the lists, power 2 thirds. And uh, this is where we get the time complexity exponent uh, 7 over 24. And this is a bit smaller than the previous best uh, for this problem, uh, which was 2 to the 0.3n in a paper by Vincent, Jeffrey, Dunga, and Murrah. This is an algorithm that is very simple and also applies to uh, four encryption and related problems. So I didn't put the formulas, that there, are, there are closed formulas uh, for the time complexity exponents depending on k. Uh, that would be ugly, so instead I plotted uh, ugly curves. So the previous paper um, gave this convergence towards 0 0.3. Now both the results with and without claw finding are going to converge toward 2 over 7. With claw finding it's just that you do this faster. Um, the curves have some kind of a weird shape, but it's just because you are optimizing with uh, integer uh, you're optimizing, you have a linear, cons linear constraints and integer variables. These integer variables, they are this k2 and k1 uh, that uh, determine the structure of the tree that you're using. This is why you have these uh, weirdly shaped curves. So in conclusion, um, in this paper what you will find is a simplified representation and analysis of these algorithms, which I hope can be useful to you. Um, there are also improvements that could be obtained from relaxing some constraints in the single solution case. And again, improvements from combining this with quantum work algorithms or claw finding. Now I want to, uh, I want to highlight the fact that the, the combination with quantum works is like, it, it was only, um, I mean, it, it, it's not complete. Uh, I, I, just, I just took the trees uh, the four merging trees and, and put a quantum walk at, at the level one. Uh, there could be a more generic way to do it. But I'm not sure that uh, even with a more generic way we could improve, we could use that to improve the lower bound 2 over 7. So, so far if you have a problem that reduces to KXO for any value of K the, to single solution KXO, the, the best time complexity uh, exponent is going to still be 2 over 7 without, without quantum walks. Oh, this is an interesting uh, open question whether this can be improved or if this is really like uh, a really tight uh, lower bound for this. So you find the full version of this paper on ePrint and uh, with that I thank you for your attention.